Hello everyone and welcome to another session of AP Human Geography with Mr. Elrod. Today we're going to t continue on with our discussion of ethnic religions and today we're going to be looking at Judaism. Judaism was a religion that was founded about the year 2000 BC. It is considered to be the world's oldest monotheistic religion. But again, really up until this point, there was the belief that uh, every every city had its its own gods that it worshipped and typically it was a series of gods, things like that. But uh, the thing that makes Judaism a little bit different, or the thing that makes Judaism different, is that uh, with the beginning of a with Abraham, and I'll get to him in just a second. With Abraham, there's this belief that there is only one God, uh, and he is he is the only God. Uh, it doesn't really matter about you know, the gods that are worshipped uh, in other cities and things like that. But he is the one true God, uh, and he is the God that exists and create all things on the earth. And so this is really the first time that that is, uh, that is really ever considered because, again, uh, up to that point, all the, all the different uh, city-states and things like that, even if they worshipped their own god, they might have recognized the gods of another city-state. They probably had multiple gods within their own city as well. Uh, so this is really a new idea. Uh, and it comes from the Semitic earth. Uh, it begins, um, Abraham is from uh, near, uh, near Babylon, uh, what, we can, what, what today would be considered uh, Babylon. He's from uh, a region of southern, uh, what is today, southern Iraq uh, in a land called Ur, and he's called out of Ur by God, and he's called uh, to a new land, which eventually today we will know uh, as Israel. And uh, Judaism is the religion that relates specifically to the Jewish or the Hebrew people, and, and we use that kind of interchangeably, but really Jewish refers more to the religious side of things, whereas Hebrew refers more to kind of to the ethnic side of things. But uh, the thing is, is that this Judaism and Hebrew, they're, they're so interconnected and interrelated that there's really no separation of the two. Again, they're founded by, it's founded by the man Abraham, or not really founded by, but God calls out Abraham from the place that he's living, and uh, God chooses him to be the one that he will uh, raise up the nation of Israel in, and he's the one who begins to first spread the message of God. And uh, what's important to understand is that Judaism is really the parent religion of both Christianity and Islam, because both Christianity and Islam claim claim Abraham to kind of to be the beginning point um, uh, of their religion. Uh, the, where the divide happens is that Christians, if you look at the sons of Abraham. Ishmael and Isaac, Christians point to uh, to Isaac as the son of the promise or the son of the covenant, whereas Muslims point to uh, Ishmael as the son of the promise or the son of the covenant. And so that is where uh, really that whole uh, set of tension begins, is all the way back to the sons that Abraham has through his two wives, um, his two wives, Sarah, and, well, his, his surrogate, uh, Sarah, his wife, and then the surrogate, um, Hagar. In Judaism, the holy books uh, that are considered and read, you have what's called the Torah. The Torah is uh, really the book of history, so the book of Moses and the law that is written. Uh, in the Christian Bible, it would be considered the first five books of the Old Testament. Uh, and again, this is where the Jewish people, uh, they find their history. They also find their religious text and their religious law, how they're supposed to live their life, how they're supposed to interact with the other people that are in the immediate area around them. Then you have what's called the Talmud. The Talmud is the book of traditions. Uh, it is uh, you know, after it's considered to be after the books of Moses, and it's written by various rabbis, and it can continue to be added on to um, over time in the way that the Jewish people are supposed to kind of go about living their lives. And as they encounter new uh, new things in, in society and in history, then this is the way that those uh, that the Jewish people should handle themselves in those new societies and in those new situations that maybe wouldn't be addressed in uh, in the Torah. Again, because Judaism is an ethnic religion, there's really not an effort for the Jewish people to spread their faith. Uh, some things that Jewish people consider about themselves that they are God's chosen people. And God literally picked them out and, and decided that these are the people that he would work with. And if you're not born into that, then there's, again, there's really no, it's not anything for you really to be concerned about. In fact, uh, I believe it was a Jewish rabbi, uh, our church went to go visit a, a synagogue and talking to a Jewish rabbi, and basically his comment was, you know, don't really worry about it, you know, you're good people, and we'll see you kind of on the other side, was kind of his comment. So again, it's not really, it's not really your fault that you're not born into this relationship with God, but you know, there's nothing you can do about it, because you're not born into that situation. 
Uh, and again, as a result, there aren't many practitioners. Obviously, in Hinduism, there's more practitioners because it's open. Uh, and also, you have the large birth rates of, of the Indian subcontinent, whereas in Judaism and the Jewish populations, uh, you know, the ethnic group of Jewish people have been uh, kind of worked into, uh, have been worked into European society and things like that. And so they've really taken on some of the maybe social characteristics and the birthing characteristics of of the European, and so they don't necessarily have as many people, don't necessarily have as many children, and so their populations are going to be going to be smaller. And again, one thing that makes Judaism uh, pretty difficult and pretty um, pretty difficult to understand and kind of unwind is the fact that it's not just a religion, but it's also an ethnicity. And in our world today, it's a political state, and so it's all these things kind of wrapped up into one. And um, you know, most of us when we talk about religion, religion is something that you know. It, it's part of our life is you know, a segment of our life to be Jewish it goes really beyond that it goes to kind of the fiber of your being and kind of makes up the foundation of who you are it's not really just your religion but it's your history it's your set of traditions it's the things that you know, you do, you've done with your family um, and so it, it really just makes the understanding of all that just just a little bit more difficult and a little bit more intricate than when we normally think of religions the only real reason for the spread of Judaism was the uh, diaspora that happened to the Jude uh, Jewish population under the rule of the Roman Empire. And in that situation, the Romans had taken over uh, had taken over what was, was then called Palestine, uh, and the Jewish had staged a series of revolts. Um, in fact, if you go back and read read, the, read history or read, read the Bible, um, the Jews tried to sell Jesus as a as a rebel and someone who's trying to overthrow the Roman Empire. That's one of the reasons why uh, the Romans don't really interfere when he's crucified. Um, but anyway, so uh, the Jewish people had, had pushed and pushed uh, rebellion against the Roman Empire, so the Romans finally got tired of it, uh, and so they destroy uh, the center of the um, the center of the Jewish state, Ju uh, Jerusalem, and then they scatter the uh, the Jewish people all throughout the Roman Empire to try and keep. Uh, to try and keep rebellion from happening again. That's really the only reason for the spread of Judaism. Otherwise, it would have just been centrally located in uh, the state of Israel, uh, like it is it, like it is today, and it would have just it would have just stayed there. And again, that was a fairly common practice by ancient uh, by ancient empires to take a group of people that were uh, rebellious and creating problems to throw to ex to scatter them all throughout the empire to separate them. So that they would not be able to have contact with each other, they'd put them in new, new towns and new areas so they couldn't communicate with other people, uh, and it would keep them from uh, from rebelling against the empire. So this is just a uh, this is just a map that shows you some of the places where uh, the Jewish population was scattered during the, in the Roman Empire after the diaspora. And again, you can see it's really kind of all over the place. Um, as a result of, uh, of what the Romans did to them after the sacking of, of Jerusalem. We talk about Judaism uh, today, modern Judaism, you only have three branches of Judaism and they're all kind of going at Judaism uh, in, in different ways. And, and a lot of it has to do with more of a, not necessarily, I guess it is religious context, also a social context. How are the Jewish interacting with, with the si society and how are they dealing with certain uh, modern social issues? So you have Orthodox Judaism, Conservative Judaism, what's called Reform Judaism. And I kind of take them in order from the most uh, conservative to the least conservative. So Orthodox is the absolute most conservative. Reform would be considered the most liberal or the most open. Uh, and we'll look at those in just a second. When we talk about Orthodox Judaism, this is the group that practice, that is the most strict practitioners of Judaism. They're going to mo most closely follow the traditions, the way that things have traditionally been done. Uh, that they're going to follow uh, the teachings of the law and you know the keeping of the law, so things like no, work, not working on the Sabbath day, um, you know, following the uh, the old customs and the old ways of, of celebration and uh, the old festivals and holidays, uh, and, and uh, also the old social customs in terms of what they will and will not allow within uh, their communities. Reform Judaism uh, would is a Judaism that tries to take. Uh, the traditional Judaism and bring it into the modern world, make it something that's a little bit more contemporary, or a little bit more re relevant in terms of their practices, in terms of their methods of worship, who they will and will not allow into the Jewish community. Um, considered to be the more liberal group uh, of Judaism. And what I'm going to do is, you see down here in my notes section, I took uh, some a portion from their website 
I'm just going kind to of read through this real quick so you kind of get an idea of what it is uh, that they believe or how they practice. So uh, if we start here, it says, Throughout history, Jews have remained firmly rooted in Jewish tradition, even as we've learned much from our encounters with other cultures. Nevertheless, since our earliest days, Reformed Judaism has asserted that Judaism, that a Judaism frozen in time is an heirloom, not a living fountain. The greatest contribution of Reformed Judaism is that it has enabled... Excuse me. Uh, da, 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 da. It has enabled the Jewish people to introduce innovation while preserving tradition, to embrace diversity while asserting commonality, to affirm beliefs without rejecting those who doubt, and to bring faith to sacred texts without sacrificing critical scholarship. Reformed Judaism affirms that the central tenets of Judaism, God, Torah, and Israel, even as acknowledges the diversity of Reformed Judaism, beliefs, and practices. We believe that all human beings are created in the image of God and that we are God's partners in improving the world. Repairing the world is a hallmark of Reformed Judaism as we strive to bring peace, freedom, and justice to all people. Reformed Jews accept the Torah as the foundation of Jewish life containing God's ongoing revelation to our people and the record of our people's ongoing relationship with God. We see the Torah as God-inspired, a living document that enables us to confront the timeless and timely challenges of everyday lives. In addition to our belief that Judaism must change and adapt to the needs of the day and survive our own firm commitment to the Tikkun Olam, the following principles distinguish Reformed, Judaism, Reformed Jews from other streams of Judaism in North America. Reformed Jews are committed to the principle of inclusion, not exclusion. Since 1978, the Reformed movement has been reaching out to Jews by choice and interfaith families, encouraging them to embrace Judaism. Reformed Jews consider, Jewish, consider children to be Jewish if they are the child of a Jewish father or mother, so long as the child is raised as a Jew. Reformed Jews are committed to the absolute equality of women in all areas of Jewish life, they're the first movement to ordain women rabbis, invest in women cantors, and elect women presidents of our synagogues. Reformed Jews are also committed to the full participation of gays and lesbians in synagogue life as well as society at large. And again, I got that from uh, their actual website. And so, again, you can see what they're trying to do there. You see the, the, uh, you see the emphasis on uh, the living faith, living text. You see emphasis on... Uh, equality of women, equality of homosexuals within the uh, within the synagogue, the acceptance of people who would typically not be considered Jewish people, especially if they don't have a Jewish mother, uh, since Judaism, uh, the, the belief that Judaism runs through the, the, the line of the mother. And so those are some elements of Reformed Judaism that are going to make it uh, much different from especially the uh, Orthodox Judaism. The other type of Judaism uh, is a conservative, is what's called conservative Judaism, and I have the same thing down here, and we'll go through that in just a second. Uh, but what it tries to do is it tries to kind of split the middle between Orthodox Judaism and Reform Judaism, much more moderate, a little bit more giving than than the Orthodox Judaism, uh, but definitely not as liberal and open as uh, the uh, the Reform Judaism. So again, we'll read kind of the statement down here that comes from uh, their website. It says. As described in the preamble to its constitution, they are the advancement of the cause of Judaism in America and the maintenance of Jewish tradition in its historic, historic continu uh, continuity, continuity sorry, to assert and establish loyalty to the Torah and its historic exposition, to further the observance of Sabbath and, and dietary laws, to preserve the service, the reference of Israel's past and hopes for her restoration, to maintain the traditional character of liturgy with Hebrew as the language of prayer, foster Jewish religious schools in the curricula of which the study of Hebrew language and literature, literature shall be given a prominent place. The conservative movement began in Germany in the middle of the 19th century and centered around Jewish theological seminary of Breslau, which was founded in 1854 and directed during its first two deca decades by Zacharias Frankel. The catalyst was to pr uh, pr protest against perceived excesses of the reform movement, but the conservative movement's founders were not interested in merely preserving Judaism as that, exactly as they had received it. They knew that a living organism cannot remain static, and that change, whether it leads to growth or decay, is inevitable. They sought to guide Jewish life in a manner that would allow for the necessary change without destroying or impairing its essential tradition and historical continuity. Again, and so you see there really conservative Judaism kind of as a reaction against reform Judaism, uh, and what they believe to be kind of the excesses and the liberties that Reformed Judaism was taken, taking. Uh, so that's all we'll do for right now. I'm probably about to run out of time. So uh, in our second video, we'll go over the, uh, the synagogue and some of the uh, cultural landscape of Judaism.